So now that we know about transformations, we need to be able to describe them with a good amount of detail so that someone else knows what's going on or could redraw them without actually seeing them. Remember that translation should look like a slide. Rotation, things should be flipped across each other and kind of point at each other. Rotation, things are pointing in the same direction still, but they're turning around a circle. In dilation, we haven't done much with yet, but it's an enlargement or a reduction, kind of like on a copy machine. There's some details that you should be able to talk about with all of them. So we look at this one, these triangles, this polygon, and we look for the twins. What's the relationship between the twins? Either Any set of twins, A to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime, the same thing should be happening to all the twins. So let's look at A. How do we get from A to A prime? This is a slide. Nothing's been turning. Nothing's pointing at each other. Um, so we've got a translation. Now how do you get from A to A prime? Well, some people just want to go up to, okay, up to, and right, one, two, three. All right. Some people want to go right three and then up two. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Now, there's actually a shorter way to write that, and that's that vector notation we've been talking about. And it will be angle brackets and then the x coordinate, the right left. So that'll be three. And then the y coordinate, the y motion. So that would be two. So instead of writing up two and write three, we can just write angle bracket three, two. So we look at this. Does it look like it's turning around something? Does it look like it's pointing at itself? Is C pointing at C, A pointing at B kind of thing? Kind of like the eyes of a pumpkin. No, this is a translation. It's just a slide. And vector notation. How do I go from A to A prime or B to B prime? Well, let's look at B to B prime because it's not inside. A little clearer to see. So we go left 2. So negative 2. And then we go, so we went left two, one, two, up one. So, translation, negative two, one. That tells somebody everything. How far to go to get from that to that? Now, does this look like a slide, like a turn, like a flip? This is a turn, this is a rotation. So rotation, we need to know pivot point and how far. So we'll go ahead and write down rotation first. Awesome. And we need a protractor. Great. Put the, put the crosshair of the protractor on the pivot point. And then pick a set of lines, either line to A and A prime from the pivot point. Pick an angle. A got turned. A got turned to A prime. So we put this on here, and then we rotate our protractor so it lines up with one of the lines. I missed my pivot point a little bit, didn't I? Yes, I did. All right, maybe up a little. Boom. So this is zero is right on the line for A. So we read over here the line to A prime, and it is either 60 or 120. Well, if this is zero, I'm looking at the inside numbers. So it's 120. And we turned this way. We turned from here to here. That would be called counterclockwise. So rotation, 120 degrees, counterclockwise around C prime. C and C, it could, you could also say C because C and C prime are in the same spot. So again, what do we got? Flip, translate, rotate, fly. It is a rotation, so we need a protractor. We need some lines now, because there's no lines there. So let's draw some lines, some rays, from the pivot point, through something. Um, let's go through B, because it's the closest one. Doesn't matter which, because everything does the same thing. And let's get our protractor on top of that. Do it right on D, and then turn it so it lines up with one of the lines. There we go. And we turn from A, for from B 
to B prime, which is a, doesn't matter which way you measure the angle from here to here, here to here, same angle. So if you start here at zero, this is 75 degrees. So a 75 degree, we went from B to B prime, so that would be clockwise, clockwise rotation around point D. Now, we got things pointing at each other. B is pointing at B, A is at A, C is at C, and we got a line, so there's a reflection. So, reflection, now describe the mirror. A crossed horizontal line. All right. Um, but let's kind of give a reference point to where the closest point is on the polygon, a reference figure. Geolocated idea. B is one up from the mirror. It gives them something. At least we know that it's relatively close to the mirror, not really far away. Give them the best we can. Again, we've got a reflection. Reflection across line ED. Well, what is line? Say something about the line. Is it vertical? Is it horizontal? Oh, it's slanted across slanted line. Now, remember some algebra. We can do slope. Now, it's a bad part here, but the dots are on a point. What's in between 2 and 4? 3. What's in between 6 and 8? 7. Um, so rise over run. 3 up to 7 is a 4. And so each grid's by 2. So 2, 3. With a slope of 4 thirds. And A is uh, oh, straight across from D, so that's pretty good. A is 4 to the right of the mirror. Because there's our mirror. There's four, four dots straight to the right of it. So we talked about the mirror. We talked about how close the shape is to it. This is the thing we haven't done much with yet. It's a dilation. Is it getting bigger or getting smaller? Well, you can do that at least for now. Um, it's an enlargement. It got bigger because AB is smaller than AB prime. We'll talk more about that later. Smaller, bigger? Oh, bigger. Smaller, bigger. It's bigger. Dilation. Enlargement. Because DC is 2 and DC prime is 4. So it's twice as big. We might want to be able to talk about that later. All right, so now I'm going to throw up some examples. You take a look at them, solve them, and then we will go look at the answer. See how well you did. You might want to pause this. New problem, pause it so you can look at it. Pause the problem. Pause. So how'd you do? Hope you did well. See you next time.